Today we got one of the, well, pretty much the most recent Skull Degree Pleasant book, Dead or Alive. Time is running out, baby. And today we got pretty much one of, which is one of my all-time favorite series with the witty skeleton detective Skull Degree Pleasant and his sidekick slash, you know, just fellow detective, Valkyrie Kane. And last time we read Apocalypse Kings, which was, you know, which was happy times. It was back when when Skullduggery wasn't as crazy as now, and Valkyrie wasn't as depressed as now. And the stakes weren't half as high. It was great. But now we're back to the present, and the present is grim as ever. Damocles Creed, who is the current Pope, pretty much, kind of guy, who of the, of the Church of the Faceless, is trying to bring the, fa the Faceless Ones back onto the Earth. And how is he doing that? He's, he has these activation pillars all around Roarhaven, and when he activates them on, on, on this day called Dryokt, I have no idea how to pronounce that, this enormous energy wave goes boop and swallows like a lot of things, and a lot of people die, and it, it searches, and then eventually it stops when it finds a uh, descendant of the Faceless Ones who will like, become like the, a Faceless One and become a portal for the Faceless Ones to come back to the Earth with. I, I, I think that's what, what he's trying to do. You know, typical bad guy plan. And Skullduggery Pleasant and Valkyrie Kane are trying to stop them. And, and Valkyrie, meanwhile, has, seems to have this newfound ability to go back in time. I mean, go to the future. So she uses that insane, really OP ability to try to send her consciousness to the future and ends up sending her entire body to the future. Yeah, she time traveled, basically. And she goes to the future and she finds out the world is a terrible place. Um, most of the mortals are slaves or pretty much treated as cattle. The sorcerers are, well, all faceless ones lovers. And most of the people there are pretty much cuckoo or crazy. And all of their old allies have either turned on them or died or given up. And Skullduggery Pleasant is nowhere to be found. And herself has apparently turned into some sort of harpy. Which is hilarious, but terrifying. And there she meets Malice. Malice being, um, Alice... Well, it's Valkyrie's little sister who got activated by the boob activation wave thing. And she, she's now, she's now the, the she's now pretty much just like a faceless one. She is a faceless one. And it's, and it's great. It's, it's kind of terrible, but it's also great. And, and the future is terrible and she needs to stop the, stop, you know, apocalypse from coming and this entire situation happening. So they do a lot of complicated time travel back and forth BS. And meanwhile, Damocles Creed is assassinated and comes back to life. Skullduggery Pleasant is messed up as usual. <laughs> it's seriously messed up, dude. I don't even know how to explain the plot that are in the, like, the 600 pages of this book. Basically, things are really screwed up. We need to find the Eye of Rast and destroy it, or find the Crystal of the Saints, which is like, apparently, it, it's, the, it's the eye of a monster of a faceless one. That's something we need to destroy. We fail at destroying all both of those things. And when Valkyrie goes to the future a second time, she meets Cadaver Kane, who is apparently Skullduggery Pleasant's future self. But he's Kaku. He, he serves the Vishya D. As in, like... He, he serves the gods of death, and the gods of death want to kill everyone and turn them into mindless zombies. <sighs> yep, the future skill degree pleasant is evil. Great, that's just awesome. Yeah, it's super annoying. And, and yeah, things are not going good currently. And... And we need to, we, we're trying to stop it, like the typical Skullduggery Pleasant and Valkyrie Kane clutch way, you know, fighting off and use together with our allies, fighting off the bad guys, trying to destroy whatever doomsday device they have with the evil monologue and stuff. But this time, they fail. Completely. Cadaver Kane tries to succeed, but he, he loses. Like, he, he wants to stop the Faceless Ones from coming, but he wants to... He wants the death gods to come, and that's equally as bad almost. And he tries, and he does not succeed. 
his ability is that he can see all the possible futures within his mind, which is crazy. But he has to look through all the futures, and that could take him like months. So it's kind of pointless if you think about it in some ways. It's like being able to know all of the possibilities or answers to this question, but there's like 20 million. So there's really not a point of you knowing the possible futures. <sighs> yep, he, Catarid Kane gets defeated. Meanwhile, Scuddery Plus and Valkyrie King goes in there and tries to stop the Doomsday device. They kind of do, but Valkyrie Kane got activated by the wave thing, and now, now she's the mother and the portal for the Faceless Ones. She is now the bad guy, and the next book is probably going to be him versus her, which is, again, terrible on so many levels. Like, so many levels. And now I kind of want to talk about a couple of, like, really typical Derek Landy things. So first off, wit. It's funny, it's great, it's badass. That is Skullduggery Pleasant for you. It is awesome. The plot is... The plot is really riveting and surprising and all that, but it's it's typical Skullduggery Pleasant, if you know what I mean. There's a formula that Derek Landy kind of uses. There's the Doomsday Device, there's the really interesting bad guy, and then good guys are forced to become bad guys, and bad guys are forced to become good guys, making our minds conflict. They, she makes us love these characters and kills them, kills a couple off, and makes that tension ramp up more. And then there's a final twist at the end where the bad guy has some sort of super secret weapon, and usually Valkyrie Kane and Skullduggery Pleasant stops that. However, this time, they don't. They lose. Valkyrie Kane is now the bad guy. And Skullduggery Pleasant needs to stop her in the next book, hopefully. And it's and it's it's not good. It's not great. Things things are things are bad right now. And apparently the next book is the last book in in this in this series. And I mean in the second part of the Skullduggery Pleasant saga or whatever. And what I find really interesting is that Derek Landy is doing the same thing again. Why am I saying this? Because remember the last time when Valkyrie became a psychopath murderer who wanted to kill everyone? She was the main villain of the first series. She's Dark Quest. This has all happened before, except this time they're making the Faceless Ones, who we, ha we have supposedly sealed off from our world like 10 books ago, to go into her body to mess up with our mind even more. Sure, I enjoyed the book. It's a good book. But... <laughs> The plot is like, it's almost like a repeat of what happened, except it's far more uncomfortable and, and we have really deep attachments to each of the characters, so now there's a lot more stakes. And we, we, we don't know if we can win this time. I mean, Skullduggery Pleasant, I'm gonna be completely honest with my opinion here, Skullduggery Pleasant's first series was excellent, it was really, really good. The second series is kind of, it feels like Derek Landy's trying to do something different and he is technically doing different things and bringing in different plots and different plot devices and it's excellent and it makes your heart pump, it makes you read through it, rip through it and all of that good stuff, but, but, I mean, and you got that old skill degree pleasant taste of like, you know, the wit, the magic, the badassness, the guns, the action, that's all great, but I find that, um, I find in some, in a lot of ways, it's just almost like a repeat of the previous Skullduggery Pleasant Saga with the last end of Dead Men and the Dying of the Light. And, and I kind of, to some extent, find that disappointing. I wish there was something different because the, the punchline is this. The main characters, Skullduggery Pleasant and Valkyrie Kane, go through a whole lot of moral dilemmas and they have, to, they have to kill a lot of people, and they have depression, they have psychological problems, and they, they fight, they kill, and they try to save the world, and then they, and then they fail, and the main bad guy of the second part of the series is also Valkyrie. Just like the first series. It's the same thing repeated over again. Like, I li for example, another thing I kind of want to critique was, um, in the last book, you know, um, 
with Obsidian Blade and Ugger, the, the Chosen One. We've been building that up for like three books, which is pathetic uh, when we think of Derek Landy things, because he likes to build up things for like seven books. But like, like the, the bad guys in the King of the Dark Lands was built up so much, and then he was just killed in like a chapter. I wish there was more of a huge underlying threat, and there's a huge battle, I guess, but I wish there was like multiple, not not just killing this really major villain that we've been building up forever and just just obliviate them with the blade of obsidian blade and i guess i guess we kind of built up the faceless ones up again but it kind of feels forced you know like we already kind of fought them and we already we already kind of banished them to another realm why are we fighting them again it's it's kind of like a it almost feels like a redundant story to me and those are the critiques, I guess. And it kind of frustrates me to some extent. But, but, our badass characters are back. They're woody as ever. It's a hilarious book. The plot is riveting and makes your hand, breaks your palms sweaty as usual. And it has that nice, skull degree pleasant, Derek Landy taste to it. It's pretty good. And like always, your plot quester and a plot quester, I would give this, let's go with an 8 out of 10. It's a good skull degree it's a good okay it's a good fantasy novel it's a good action fantasy novel it just to me feels a little bit redundant and very similar to what Derek Landy's already done which was super innovative and super creative at that time but now that it, it feels like it's kind of repeating it doesn't feel as good or fresh and I, I think I've been saying that same thing in every single Skullduri Pleasant review after Dying of the Light Maybe something needs to change. I'm not sure. I'm not good enough an author to say that. But anyways, like always, your plot quester. See you later. Have a great day.